let's get that thing.
sight of God and these witnesses, I ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? So be it in the eyes of God. Dear friends, you may be seated. Welcome in to this wonderful day for Jonathan and Jessica and their family. We thank you for joining them and being a part of this special day for them. We're glad that you have come out and given up your time. A couple things that we want to remind you of is please turn off your cell phones. That means silence them at the very least so that we don't hear something go off in the middle of the service itself when we're doing the vows. The other thing is a reminder that they actually hired people to take pictures for them. And so when they're having pictures taken, please be careful. And even as you're taking pictures there, don't stand up in front of someone who may be behind you because they can't see. And B, they may be trying to take a picture from their seat as well. So it's okay, take all the pictures you want, just don't get in the aisles. We're good? We're glad you're here, let's do this thing. We begin in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the sight of God and before his church to witness the union of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. This is an honorable estate instituted and blessed by God in paradise before humanity's fall into sin. In marriage, we see a picture of the communion between Christ and his bride, the church. Our Lord blessed and honored marriage with his presence, first miracle at Cana in Galilee. This estate is also commended to us by the Apostle Paul as good and honorable. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into inadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for the mutual companionship, help, and support that each person ought to receive from the other both in prosperity and adversity. Marriage was also ordained so that man and woman may find delight in one another. Therefore, all persons who marry shall take a spouse in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust. For God has not called us to impurity, but in holiness. God also established marriage for the procreation of children who are to be brought up in the fear and instruction of the Lord so that they may offer him their praise. For these reasons, God has established a holy estate that Jonathan and Jessica wish to enter. They desire our prayers as they begin their marriage in the Lord's name and with his blessing. We hear the word of the Lord. Dwight. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. His body and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, she might be holy without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives with their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother, and hold fast to his wife. The two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Thank you, Uncle Dwight. Now we invite Uncle Mark to come forward to share the word. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails.
A reading from the Holy Gospel, Matthew, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 4. Jesus answered the Pharisees, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh? So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. This is the gospel of the Lord. This is the point where I get to give you a message and share with you encouragement. I love that you selected, first of all, 1 Corinthians 13. A lot of couples do that when they're getting married. But as I've worked with you and we did our counseling together and I've watched you, I see that you comprehend what that's about. It's not about a feeling. And when you look at 1 Corinthians 13, it's not about a feeling, that's for sure. Because there are going to be days when you're going to wake up and you're not going to feel so in love. You may find that hard to believe, but turn around and look at those folks. Everybody who's woken up married and felt, I didn't feel that in love today, will bear witness to that. Because if you make your marriage about how you feel, you'll be all over the place. And your marriage will fail. Because you can only be responsible for your feelings you can't be responsible for the feelings of others and so you can make people feel bad with words of shame and guilt but the goal that is expressed in the first corinthians passage is always to put the other person first put them first in love it's a sacrificial love it's a love that says i will take the extra step in order for our marriage to work you see first corinthians is not simply about love that puppy dog in love experience that we have it's about a commitment and that's what's described a commitment to work through the challenges and the difficulties and there will be challenges and there will be difficulties everyone who's married and has been married for any amount of time can tell you there are challenges and difficulties my wife and I have been married for 38 years we've had our share of challenges and difficulties but what kept us going through all of that is the commitment to love, to walk together through thick and thin. You're going to make vows to that point as well, that you're going to go through it through thick and thin, that you're going to work through the challenges and the, that you face and that you'll have to deal with as your marriage progresses. And as you begin to introduce, by the grace of God, children into your family, oh, that becomes a whole new ballgame. <laughs> but if you're walking together first, then everything else will fall into place. Now, I told you that I was going to mess with your families, right? So we know this is about to happen. When you have challenges and difficulties in your family and in your marriage, keep them to your marriage. If you need to talk to someone, you are currently looking at that person. Don't go talking to mommy and daddy, sisters and brothers, about the challenges that you're facing. Because what happens is you get over it. You probably don't even register it anymore. But you know who remembers? Your parents, your sister, your brother, those friends that you confide in. They remember it and they keep a scorecard. That's a reality. You may not like it, but that's a reality. And so every time something happens, they go, see, I told you, see, I told you. And so they're keeping school. Now, I talk to your parents. Just part for me a little bit. Their marriage is two becoming one. There's no place in it for you as far as being in their business. So what I'm going to tell you as parents and friends is mind your business. Don't go poking into their marriage. Don't go asking questions that put them on the spot. If she doesn't look happy, she may not be happy. You've probably not been happy on a date or two and you didn't need people coming up going, so what's going on? Find your business. If he doesn't look happy, he may not be happy that day. Mind your business because their happiness is built on one another and they'll grow forward if they don't have to continually try to defend themselves or defend the other person because you have an issue with them. And so in love, I tell you, mind your business.
righteousness. Good point. Made it. Move on, Pastor. <laughs> you can step back together again. One of the great joys that I have is actually doing the premarital counseling in the marriage itself. And I've watched you all. You all have walked together for a long time. Can you say 11 years? So they know each other. If they haven't figured it out now, they'll be seeing me. <laughs> and so God's blessings be with you because the root of your marriage is found in Jesus Christ. As we heard in Ephesians chapter five, that your marriage is grounded and founded on Christ. And Christ was willing to sacrifice himself for his bride and did so. Likewise, the bride then submits to the groom, Christ, and to her husband as he is willing to sacrifice for himself. It all comes back to that 1 Corinthians passage again. Christ was the perfect example of love in his sacrifice that we might have eternal life through him. And that's the foundation of marriage, and that's the way to help your marriage to grow forward and deeper in relationship, commitment, and love. In Jesus, I say, amen. Let's get on with what everybody else came here for, including you. Jonathan, I address you first. Jonathan Bradley Gifford, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you nourish and cherish her as Christ loved his body, the church giving himself up for her? Will you love, honor, and keep her in sickness and in health? and forsaking all others, remain united to her alone, so long as you both shall live. And if so answer, I will. Jessica Ann Foster, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony as God ordained it? Will you submit to him as the church submits to Christ? Will you love, honor, and keep him in sickness and in health? and forsaking all others, remain united to him alone, so long as you both shall live. If so answer, I will. Please face your bride and your groom. Jonathan, repeat after me. I, Jonathan, take you, Jessica, to be my wedded wife to have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will. I pledge you my faithfulness. Jessica, repeat after me. I, Jessica, take you, Jonathan, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death us do part, according to God's holy will. And I pledge you my faithfulness, May I have the rings, please? We pray. Almighty Father, you have generously created all things to serve us for our good. Send your blessing upon this couple who shall wear these rings as a constant reminder of their marital fidelity. Grant that by your mercy, they may live gladly and faithfully in this holy estate. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jonathan, would you please take Jessica's ring? Repeat after me. Receive this ring as a pledge and token 
of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jessica, would you please take Jonathan's ring and repeat after me. Receive this ring as a pledge and token of wedded love and faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Would you please turn and face me? Now that Jonathan and Jessica have committed themselves to each other in holy matrimony, have given themselves to each other by their solemn pledges, and have declared the same before God and these witnesses, I pronounce them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And now the almighty and gracious God abundantly grant you his favor and sanctify and bless you with the blessing given to Adam and Eve in paradise, that you may please him in both body and soul, live together in holy love until your life's end. Amen. Jessica and Jonathan have chosen to do a sand ceremony, and so I'm going to invite you to step around to do that at this point. sand ceremony is designed to represent the two of them becoming one together and as the sand gets intermingled as it's moved around they'll have a big challenge trying to separate the blue from the pink going forward and that's the intent is that they are now one together in Christ Jesus would you please join with me in prayer almighty everlasting God our Heavenly Father Grant that by your blessing, Jonathan and Jessica may live together according to your word and promise. Strengthen them in faithfulness and love toward each other. Sustain and defend them in every trial and temptation. Help them to live in faith toward you, in communion of your holy church, and in loving service to each other, that they may ever enjoy your heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our dwelling place in all generations, look with favor upon the homes of our land. Embrace husbands and wives, parents and children in the arms of your love, and grant that each in reverence for Christ fulfill the duties you have given them. 
bless our homes, that they may ever be sheltered for defenseless, a fortress for the tempted, a resting place for the weary, and a foretaste of your eternal home with you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to turn, hold hands, and face the folks who have joined you to witness this day. Turn all the way and face them. <laughs> Dear friends, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gifford. You may kiss your bride and your groom. family you're asked to stay for pictures following they've gone around to the side so please don't go hunting them down because they're going to come back and take pictures those of you who are not taking pictures we have something special for you too there is a cocktail hour up in just go straight up the path and into the property itself and you will find the cocktail hour it'll be out on the patio there so please go and enjoy yourself <laughs> excuse me in anticipation of the bride and groom joining you soon Thank you for once again for being here for this wonderful day. Enjoy.